Just tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, He kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for His own. Good morning. You know, if I count right, we are now in the ninth week of our quarantine. And for me, it's been interesting through these weeks to see the way that the world has responded to this pandemic by seeking God's help. For example, nearly two months ago now, on March 15th, our president called for a national day of prayer. And several states like West Virginia and Louisiana and Arkansas, well, their governors have declared days of prayer as well for their states. Mayors of many cities have followed suit. They've called on people of faith to ask for God's deliverance from COVID-19. In fact, in Mount Airy, North Carolina, a mayor named David Rowe asked that beginning on, I guess, the first Sunday of the pandemic, that churches in their area would ring their bells every day for two minutes at noon as a reminder for the citizens of Mount Airy at that time to get on their knees and ask for God to help. Well, everywhere... Pretty much everyone then is praying for God to come to our aid. In fact, a report from the University of Copenhagen found out that in March, online searches for prayer hit a five-year high. Here's what the author of that article said. The rise in prayer intensity supersedes what the world has seen for years. As more and more die, it's highly likely that the rise in prayer intensity will continue. Well, this comes as no surprise because all humans instinctively know to turn to God when they face problems or crises. When we reach the limit of our resources, we know to call out to our Creator. Well, in the same way that a man lacking oxygen gasps for every breath, or, or someone who's falling reaches out to, to grab a branch or something to hold on to. Well, the writer of today's hymn was very familiar with this particular principle of prayer, and I'm referring to a man named Elisha Hoffman. Hoffman was born May 7, 1839, in Orwigsburg, Pennsylvania. Say that with me, Orwigsburg, and remember that name. I'll tell you why in a moment. Well, for 33 years of his life, Hoffman served as the pastor of Benton Harbor Presbyterian Church in Pennsylvania, and in his free time, and I don't know where he got this much free time, but in his free time, he wrote hymns. Even though he never received any formal music training, he was very good at it. He composed 2,000 gospel songs in his lifetime. And our hymnal contains five of the ones he's most known for. I think pretty much everybody who's watching today are familiar with those five hymns. In fact, I thought we might play a little game together. Uh, think of it as a name that hymn game, okay? Uh, I'll sing a line or two and you see if you can sing the rest. And I'll give you a quick hint. The part you sing is actually the title of the hymn, okay? Here goes. Christ has for sin atonement made. Right, I heard you, Dale. You got that one right. What a wonderful Savior. That's one. Okay, here we go. Ready for the next one? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? I heard you, Willie. You got that one right. Yeah, are you washed in the blood? Don't sing of the Lamb, because that's not part of the title. That was a little tricky. Okay, here's the next one. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. That's right, Louise, I heard you. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Okay, one more. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied. Yeah, everybody got it. Glory to his name. Good job, Red. Okay. Well, that brings us to the hymn we're studying this morning. It's entitled, I Must Tell Jesus. You heard it earlier. Now, I, for one, find it interesting that many of Hoffman's hymns, well, they were inspired by experiences that he had as a pastor, like, like me. For example, one day while visiting people in his community who were really having a tough time, Hoffman met with a woman in his church who was suffering from deep depression. As they talked, she opened her heart and poured out her pent-up sorrows. Wringing her hands, she cried, What shall I do? Oh, what shall I do? Hoffman knew what she should do because he'd gone through times of deep depression himself, like when his wife of only 11 years died suddenly. 
So he empathetically said to the woman, you cannot do better than to take all your sorrows to Jesus. So that's what you must do. You must tell Jesus. Well, for a moment, the woman seemed lost in her thoughts. Then suddenly her face lit up and she said, yes, I must tell Jesus. Well, that sentence stuck in, in Hoffman's mind. And when he got home that night, he began to write the lyrics to that great hymn. Sing them with me. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Well, he composed the music to this hymn as well. And if any of you have one of our hymnals, I'm not saying you stole it, you might just have brought it home by accident, you know, but if you have one, open to page 430, that's where it is, and look in the bottom corner and you can see the word Orwigsburg. So you see he named the tune after the town where, where, where he was, was born. You may remember that um, Pastor Bill told us a few months ago, I think it was at a hymn sing or something at church, that Hymns have a title for the words and a title for the, the music as well, and this is a good example of that. Now, the question I want us to deal with this morning is, um, why do we need to go to God in times of crisis? Or as Hoffman puts it in his hymn, why must we tell Jesus? I can think of a couple reasons. First, we must tell Jesus because he can help us. The fact is, when you and I need help with something, we go to people who have the resources and the power to help, the people who can really help. I mean, you don't call a toddler when you hear a burglar breaking in downstairs in the middle of the night. You, you call the police. When your car is stuck in the mud, you don't tie a rope to your bumper on the other side to a, a bicycle and have a guy try to pull you out while he bicycles. No, you call a tow truck. When you need surgery, you, you, you don't go to someone who has a degree in English literature. No. When you need help, you go to people you know have the wisdom and the power to help. So as Hoffman put it, we must pray when we have tough times. We must tell Jesus when we face the nightmares of life because we know that he has the resources. Only he has the resources that we need in times like that. Only God has the wisdom to know what to do. And only he has the power to do what needs doing. I want you to think about the worst problem you've ever had or are having, and maybe that's this pandemic. Or imagine the worst problem you could have in the future. Make, a, make it a big imagination, okay? Listen, our mountainous, nightmarish problems are less than anthills to God, because he is truly almighty. Psalm 89.9 says, O Lord God Almighty, who is like you? You are mighty, O Lord, and your faithfulness surrounds you. So it makes sense. We, we must go to God because we know only he can help us. Only he is all-knowing. Only he is almighty. That leads to the other reason we must go to our Lord in the tough times of life. I mean, not only can he help us, he will help us. And do you know why almighty God will help us? Why our Lord answers our prayers? He does so because he loves us. I don't know why sometimes, but he does. The Bible is literally full of verses that talk about God's great love for you and me, but some of my favorite come from the 103rd Psalm. In verse 8, for example, it says, God is abounding in love for you and me. In verse 17, it says, From everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him. In verse 11, it says, As high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for you and me. In verses like these, King David, who, let's, let's admit, he was kind of an unlovely guy at times. Well, David is saying that God loves us with an unbelievably love, an unconditional love, a, a while we were yet sinners caliber of love. Our Lord, can, he cares about our fears. He cares about our struggles. Now, what word picture, excuse me, what word picture would, would you use to describe that kind of love? Well, Jesus has given us the very perfect one. He said that God loves us like a father, like an Abba or a daddy. You know, speaking of fathers, one morning back in 1988, in the nation of Ar Armenia, two proud parents, a father named Samuel and a mother named Danielle, they sent their young son Armand off to school. 
Before he left, Samuel squatted down before his little boy, looked him in the eye and said, have a good day at school, Armand. And remember, no matter what comes in life, I'll always be there for you. Well, father and son embraced and the little boy ran off to school. Hours later, a powerful earthquake rocked the area. The radio announced that there were thousands of casualties. In fact, the death toll would, would eventually reach 50,000. Here's one picture of some of the devastation of that earthquake. It was like this everywhere. Well, Samuel and Danielle huddled around the radio for a few minutes, hoping to hear news about the area where their son's school was located. But in the midst of the pandemonium, they could get no information. So Samuel grabbed his coat and headed for the schoolyard. Uh, when he reached it, uh, what he saw brought tears to his eyes because Armand's school was nothing but a massive pile of rubble like that picture I showed you. Other parents had already arrived and they were just standing around the huge pile of debris crying. But Samuel refused to give in to despair. He, he looked around and he found the place where Armand's classroom used to be. And then he began pulling stuff off the rubble. First a big broken beam, then a rock that he, he put to one side, then another rock, another beam. As he did, one of the parents asked, what are you doing? And he said, I'm digging for my son. And the man said, you're gonna just make things worse. This building is unstable. And he tried to pull Samuel away, but Samuel would not be dissuaded. He kept on working. Time wore on and one by one, the other parents left. Then a firefighter came and he tried to pull Samuel away, but Samuel wouldn't stop. Samuel in fact said, hey, won't you help me? And he know, and he just, he said no and turned away. Samuel kept digging all through the night and all into the next day. He continued this back-breaking work. Other parents came and just placed flowers or, or pictures on the ruins, but not Samuel. He kept on working. Finally, as his strength was almost exalted, exhausted, rather, he, he picked up a beam and pushed it out of the way, and as he did, he heard a faint cry for help. Samuel listened again, and he heard a, a small voice say, Papa? Well, this understandably gave Samuel new strength, and he he renewed his efforts, digging furiously, and finally, a few minutes later, he removed enough debris to see Armand crouched in a small crawl space with several other children. Come on out, son, he said with amazing relief, of course. No, Armand said, let the other kids come out first because I know you'll get me. Well, child after child emerged until finally little Armand appeared and Samuel took his arms and Armand took Armand in his arms and Armand said, Papa, I told the other kids not to worry because you told me that you'd always be here for me. Well, 14 children were saved that day because of this father's persistent love. Nothing stopped that dad, not even a mountain of debris. Well, to an infinitely greater degree, that's the kind of love God has for us. So we know that we must tell him because we know that not only can he help, he will help. We know that our Heavenly Father loves us. We know that he's supremely interested in our prayers because he's supremely interested in us. I'm reminded of Jesus' words from Matthew 7, where he said, which of you, if his son asks for a bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Does this pandemic cause you fear? I understand how it should. Well, then there's one thing that you must do, we must do. We must go to Jesus. We must tell our Lord. You know, tomorrow is the National Day of Prayer that comes around this time every year. Let's take that day to join with Christians across our nation and pray, asking God to heal us from this virus in a way that brings him glory. Let's begin now. Would you pray with me? Father God, Thank you for your servant, Elisha Hoffman, and for the great principle of prayer that you have used him to teach us through this, this music. We praise you, Father, for your power. We praise you for your knowledge. We praise you for your, your grace-filled love. Most of all, Father, that we praise you this morning for inviting us into your presence always through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me. Farther along we'll know all about it. Farther along we'll understand why Jesus.
Stay.